So in this video, we're going to talk about the Schottky diode. And specifically, we're going to talk about the depletion region and what consequences the depletion region has uh, for Schottky diodes, as well as how it can be used to take useful measurements. And so last time we said when you bring together a metal, uh, which is some vacuum level, some Fermi level, uh, and some work function, and you bring it in contact with a semiconductor, which also has a vacuum level, uh, a conduction band. And let's say that the Fermi energy, just as it was before, is up here. So it's above the metal's uh, Fermi energy. This makes this an n-type semiconductor. And we've got our valence band and maybe our intrinsic Fermi energy as well. And when we bring these two in contact, uh, we know we've got a bunch of high energy electrons up here. So we've got a bunch of electrons uh, that have a much higher energy than they would have if they were in the metal. So the electrons are going to tend to diffuse into the metal until the Fermi energies of the two sides are equal everywhere within the device. So once that happens, uh, the band diagram will look something like this. We've got our vacuum level, um, and now our vacuum level bends down as does our conduction band and our intrinsic Fermi energy and our valence band. So EC, EF is now constant throughout the structure. And we've got our vacuum level up here. And so this is still an n-type semiconductor. And now a bunch of electrons have diffused into the metal. So the metal has more electrons than the semiconductor. And similarly, the semiconductor now has a bunch of positively charged ions. So a bunch of dopants that are now ionized very near the surface. And if we draw this just as a, a simple block, let's say we've got some metal over here and we've got some semiconductor here, then we know that the electrons are sort of all gonna be crowding up very near the edge. And this is to prevent the electric field within a metal from or prevent the metal from having an electric field anywhere inside it. So let's redraw these as the electrons all scrunching up very close to the edge. And in the semiconductor, uh, if we make the abrupt depletion approximation, we can just say, well, it's going to have a bunch of positive charge, and all of the carriers are going to be ionized now. So whatever doping concentration we had, ND, all of those carriers are ionized within some depletion region Xn. And so the charge density within this region is just QND. Uh, and since we know the charge density, we can figure out the electric field as a function of X. And let's, let's call this, uh, this direction X. Uh, and from that, we can figure out the potential or the electric potential within this region. And we can also calculate the total uh, built-in potential. So this uh, is also known as the built-in potential, just this region here, uh, this amount of band bending. But we know the amount of band bending uh, just from the work function difference between the metal and the semiconductor. So once we know that, we can figure out the depletion region, Xn. And this is exactly the same procedure that you'd follow for uh, calculating the depletion region with of a PN junction diode. But the end result that you'll get, uh, and if you want uh, more on how to actually do this, uh, so how to follow this procedure, you basically start with Gauss's law, and then you just use the definition of the electric field and the definition of voltage. Uh, and you can, after doing some integrals, uh, you'll figure out that the depletion region width is just the square root of two times the permittivity of silicon times the built-in potential divided by Q times the doping. And that's, uh, that's this quantity here, Xn. So that's the depletion region thickness. And you might say, well, what about the metal? Like, don't we have to add a little bit of, uh, I don't know, Xp or X, uh, Xm here? And the answer is, yeah, we do, uh, sort of. But the, uh, this, um, if you actually do the integrals, uh, this basically looks like a very sharp, uh, very fast function or approximately a delta function. And so when you integrate that once, it'll look like a step function. 
And when you integrate it twice to find the voltage, you'll find that the potential drop across this region is approximately zero. So the voltage dropped is almost entirely over the depletion region in the semiconductor. We still have charge neutrality. It's just that these carriers are so scrunched up, uh, their density is so high that the, uh, that the width of the depletion region, you can think of it within the metal, is essentially negligible. Uh, this is the same as a P plus N uh, diode. You'll, you'll get the same exact result for the depletion region width. And if we applied some voltage now uh, between the semiconductor and the metal, and let's say that the voltage is positive on the side of the semiconductor, so this is some reverse bias voltage VR, then our depletion region width, we just have to add VR uh, to VBI. And the reason for this is that uh, VR is just increasing the amount of band bending that we have. So it's making our bands bend even more. Um, and this is just, uh, if you carry out the integrals, do the same exact thing. Now the built-in uh, potential, you need to add, uh, add a term here. So the total amount of band bending is just going to be VBI plus VR. So ignoring what happens to the rest of the bands, because the Fermi level is going to move and all that, uh, this distance would be QVR. So the total amount of band bending is just the sum of these two. And so another interesting thing happened now that we have this depletion region here. Let's erase some of this other stuff. Um, so now that we have a depletion region, we've got a separation of charge. So we've got, this is an n-type semiconductor, so we've got a bunch of electrons which are free to move around, floating out in the semiconductor. We've got a bunch of electrons in the metal, and so uh, this acts like a capacitor. Uh, so if we try to add a little bit of charge to one side, so a little bit of negative charge to the metal, for example, we're going to get these electrons uh, are going to be repelled, and we're going to reveal more ions. And so this behavior is exactly the behavior of a capacitor. As we add charge to one side, we, we remove the same amount of charge on the other side, or we add a negative of that charge on the other side. And we know that the capacitance... Uh, or the capacitance per unit area of a parallel plate capacitor is just the permittivity of whatever material is in between uh, divided by the thickness. And in this case, the thickness is just the depletion region. And so from that, you can calculate the capacitance per unit area, and you'll get, basically, you just have to take the permittivity and divide it by the square root term, but you'll get Q and D times the permittivity, in this case it's the permittivity of silicon, but maybe it's some other semiconductor, uh, divided by 2 times VBI plus VR. And so this is the capacitance per unit area. And this will turn out to be super useful. So this is super useful uh, for taking measurements, so for semiconductor measurements. Uh, because if we know the capacitance, so we can apply different voltages, VR, and measure the capacitance at each of those voltages. And that basically allows us to deduce uh, the doping concentration as well as the built-in potential, VBI, both of which are super useful uh, if you're someone who's interested in the, uh, how devices will behave when you've got a metal connected to your semiconductor. So in the next couple of videos, we'll be going over the current voltage relationships of a Schottky diode, or we'll be trying to figure out if we apply a voltage, maybe it's, maybe it's negative, maybe it's positive, um, what is going to be the resultant current? So how does this device behave electrically? And once we know that, in addition to how, um, how this device behaves at uh, DC, let's call it, or how this... Uh, how these bands behave and how charges behave, then we know pretty much everything there is to know about the Schottky diode. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a like below and consider subscribing to my channel for more similar videos. Um, if you have any questions or comments, also please feel free to post them down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.